Today, we become legends. Hey, my name's Enter, welcome back to the channel, and today we have another Smite 2 dev deep dive to go over. And this time they're going to be talking about graphics, which is an interesting one. I felt like this was probably going to come a bit earlier than it did in the cycle of these uh, deep dives, but it's something that is quite important uh, to Smite 2. Like, I don't know if they're going to talk a lot about, like, animation and, like, lighting and stuff like that in this, or if it's purely going to be, like, the graphical fidelity of the game, but, like, all of that stuff seems upgraded in Smite 2. I have had a chance to play it myself now, by the way. I can't talk any specifics about it. I can only talk about what's publicly available, like, in these deep dives and stuff, but I have had a chance to play it myself, and you really notice the graphical improvement when you're playing the game. You know, that, that jump from UE3 to UE5, uh, it really does make a big difference in terms of, like, how it, the game just looks modern uh, compared to Smite that does look like a game game that was made in like, like 2011 which is which is what it is but yeah without further ado let's jump in have pon uh talk about the graphics of smite 2. when we were first starting on the project again we were a super small team we were tasked with making conquest map and making it function so that first playtest, we pulled over all the original smite assets and just seeing what lumen did was actually insane lighting is a really uh deceptively complicated artistic endeavor as well lighting can make or break I'm have a look endeavor at as well one light channel versus two light channels. Oh, dude, yeah, it's a noticeable difference. You have, like, um, the shadow on Bologna's cloak is, like, clearly being generated by her sword there, and the rest of it is less shadow, whereas, like, with only one light channel, there's uh, significantly less, like, um, dynamic shadowing, I suppose. Like, everything is shadowed for the most part, and there aren't really any, like, bits of light that are clearly coming through, whereas they definitely are on this thing with two light channels. Also, the sword looks uh, so much better. You know, it looks very flat here, uh, whereas it looks a lot more metallic and, like, actually light bouncing off of it and stuff like that. I'm not technical enough to know what this means. I don't know what one light channel and two light channels actually means in terms of um, development and like game coding and stuff like that but i can definitely notice the difference here and yeah lighting is an incredibly important feature um i, I don't want to say it goes overlooked because it kind of doesn't but it does go underappreciated by players in general i think a lot of devs probably know that lighting is extremely important to how the game overall looks like having a good lighting setup is arguably just as if not more important than like the actual fidelity of the textures themselves and yeah you can you can really see the difference here uh, just from one light channel to two light channels but also from like smite one to smite two like this is definitely looking a lot better endeavor as well lighting can make or break your whole scene all your characters all your you know environment so it's challenging you have to put in the time have to put in the work to make it look good on smite one we did more of uh, baked lighting which meant when you had shadows they were permanent now we have dynamic lighting which means all of our materials actually react to light so foliage capes uh, interesting elements in the environment Really? In Smite 1, it was completely fixed shadows? Dude, I didn't even know that. That's how old the game is, I guess. Yeah, this is this is really cool stuff. Right, you can so see, like, as they change where the light source is here. Like, the foliage is casting an accurate shadow. Like, th th this stuff, you, you might not actively notice it when you're playing in game but like it is something that will be in your subconscious because it will look more real it will look like it, it should instead of it like uh, feeling a little bit fake uh, interesting elements in the environment characters uh look alive trying to understand how of the all the different unreal assets talk to each other is a big barrier of entry instead of a god just having one ability and it's just one piece of code and it's relatively huge abilities are split into a whole bunch of individual components that all have their own functions through the gameplay ability system or gas system. Learning that and figuring out how it all worked together, how it all came together, um, definitely overwhelming at first, but just got to get the reps in. We did a little prototype of Chalk ulting and actually having lightning tendrils come off of him and spark onto the environment. So with basically no artist even coming in, just stock UE5, we had an incredible looking map, but it wasn't until seeing the lighting effect in the order base where I was like, if that's something that happened from just a simple straight port, what's gonna happen when the artists actually get their hands on this? That's what I'm very excited about as well. Like uh, just purely the engine upgrade in itself, the, the power that UE5 can bring, like it, it just makes everything look so much better. I mean, you've all seen it like this. There's so many games that come out nowadays or that get showcased in like early access or whatever that are built in UE5 and you just like, you can tell it's built in UE5 because it, it, they, I don't want to say they look the same, but like sometimes they do. There's like a lot of games that end up looking basically the same. And I, I don't know if that's because they're just using a lot of default UE5 stuff and they don't really have any um, proprietary artists and stuff working on it, which it sounds like Smite 2 will have and doesn't really have like its own art style. It's just using like UE5 uh, dynamic lighting and like uh, high quality textures and stuff like that. But yeah, it seems easy easier than ever to make a game that looks like incredible especially on like the realism side of things seeing the upgrades we got just out of the box from ue5 was was just awesome 
but it was super great to see the nice surprise upgrades that the other groups were doing. Some of those, you know, on the animation side, I didn't see them until I played that and seeing that first new ice wall that Ymir has is just pretty. For Ymir's wall and Smite 2, we can simulate destruction and we can have that wall actually crumble into pieces, which is awesome. Bologna's hammer swing feels so much better with the new Yes, hammer. dude. Yes. I spammed Bologna when I was playing Smite 2. Uh, dude, I was just wanting to use Bludgeon just because I love the way it looked and felt, like the sound design, the impact that it had, the like particle effects, the trails, like all of it. Just it made me want to just use the ability whenever it was off cooldown, even if it's not optimal, because like it just looks so good, dude. Scourge is similar as well. Uh, Scourge looks really good as well. It has like this kind of uh bubbling not bubbling but like glowing like lava almost effect on the ground as you hit with it looks really good as well uh the animation of eagles rally is something i also noticed a lot like the, the way she jumps in is like so much more uh, animated and like looks more real rather than her just like kind of flowing through the air like she does in spite one feels like it has a lot more impact animation changes and the new audio she's swinging around you can really feel that impact when it's smite one yeah that's the old it's animation impactful, but in smite two it's really pushing that limit previously we would need programming for all this stuff. In the new engine, we can set up all the ability logic ourselves. So projectiles, deployables, repeated effects, ticking effects, combos, chain attacks, anything that plays in sequence or series. There was a lot of... Yeah, they, they mentioned that in one of the previous uh, dev deep dives. I can't remember which one it was, but yeah, the ability to prototype without needing specific gameplay programming and having to like send it over to a team and then get them to implement that and then send it back over to you like it's just gonna be so much easier for them to make uh cool stuff uh with the, the ability to like for designers to just prototype stuff and then they can kind of see if it works and they've only wasted a little bit of time if it doesn't work rather than wasting a whole like programming team's time for like several hours or days even um cool things that we wanted to jump into but it requires testing and making sure they work well with gameplay. So in that case, it was feeling out what looks good that is worth keeping. One thing I don't really like is the zoom-ins. I think I've only really seen this on um, Yumiya's ult, but I think the zoom-ins do look a little bit weird. Sure, I think that's like well one criticism gameplay. I would have of the so graphics. So in that case, it was feeling out what looks good that is worth keeping. It's just a little bit strange. Keeping. On Smite 1, all the cloth, all the hair, everything, we had to hand key those presentations. Now in UE5, beyond the ability for the cloth to just in a lot of ways look better. It also frees our production time to better focus on the gods themselves, on more skins and then seeing where that can help. Yeah, so basically like cloth animation and stuff, uh, probably hair as well, though I'm not entirely sure because hair is a similar kind of workflow as far as I'm aware to like cloth. But yeah, in Smite 1, they had to like physically key the movement of like, for example, a cloak um, manually. Uh, whereas in UE5, they essentially just create the cloak and then give it like attributes or whatever. I I'm not very knowledgeable on this stuff. So uh, if anyone's more knowledgeable, please do leave a comment down below on this stuff. But uh, yeah, they can basically just create the cloak and like it will use the environment and uh, like flow just uh, automatically, essentially. Not fully automatically. They do still have to do stuff with it as far as I'm aware. But yeah, it's uh, going to make workflow a lot easier on that kind of stuff. Continue to evolve. And it just looks better in general. You've all seen Bologna's like a uh, cape flapping around as she moves in Spy 2. It looks really good. All of the game. UE5 was very forgiving on allowing us to have higher poly count, which means a lot of details in architecture or foliage elements. There's a million ways to do things, and finding the right one is the hard one. I think that with the tools and the power we have available to the design team right now, we're going to be able to make some really cool content for updates across the alpha, beta, and then into the future periods. All of us can look back and say, boy, I would have loved to have built that foundation this way. Uh, they've got to do it, and it shows. The effects look beautiful so far. We've been working a lot on experimenting, creating uh, new things, and adding new features to Smite 2. We are excited for our players to be able to play and experience it, all the hard work that we put in. Every day, a new boundary gets pushed somewhere, and when all that really starts to add up and you get to see all that come together, it's just an awesome feeling. I love the passion from the devs as well. Uh, they clearly all have like a big amount of passion for this. It's not just uh, like a lot of people running around saying it's a cash grab. I firmly do not believe it's a cash grab. I, I think this is something that they really want to pull their heart and soul into. Uh, can it go wrong? Can they make bad decisions? Yes, they do so pretty regularly on, <laughs> on Smite 1. But like, I do think they have a lot of passion for this. And you can see in these like dev notes uh, that they do. And it's shaping up really nice. Uh, so looking forward to more of these Smite 2 deep dives. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, my coverage of it. And uh, I will catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day and peace out, you nerds.